In the last episode, we sailed from Lombok to Christmas Island, 650 miles. In the beginning, there was not a lot of wind, so we could use the A2 and that gave us some speed. And later on, we could just go with the downwind Jennaker in the direction of Christmas Island. First to Christmas Island and then to Cocos. We enjoyed Christmas Island very much. The combination of culture, background and the nature was very beautiful. They're really big. <laughs> the rubble crabs at least. These crabs are very important for the island. They keep the soil weed free. And also because they're digging holes, the soil stays healthy. We left Christmas Island in the dark because arriving in the dark in Cocos is not an option. For the first day there was not a lot of wind in the forecast so we had no idea how fast we would go. But actually we count on only two nights for 550 miles. Less than one knot of wind here behind the island. Uh, they promised 10 knots, 340 here in Christmas Island. Sunrise on board. Actually, this is real champagne sailing. There are hardly any waves, and there's just enough wind to give the boat a decent speed in combination with the strong current that we are having in the back. The wind has been way more from the south than forecasted. Seems like it's turning now. Well, we haven't seen another boat <laughs> as long as we are sailing today. But we saw one on the AIS. We thought it might have been the phosphate ship going straight at uh, Christmas Island, but uh, it hasn't been confirmed. Well, the wind is turning in the right direction. Time to go to bed. 
Riker takes over until 11. Yeah. And then it's time for a little chicken. Nina did a great job last night. We started at 11. Yes. And now it's? 5.20. Good. Two hundred sixty miles in twenty five hours. So we're in the evening of the second day. We're already sure that we will arrive in the light tomorrow. We have to go faster than six and not faster than 13 on average. And today was slower than yesterday. Today only 9.4. During the night we hear that uh, Nino had their big spinnaker wrapped around the forestay and cannot get it off. So they still have 300 miles to go. I think they have to sail the whole way with this flapping sail in the front. I couldn't sleep anymore after this news and uh, I wanted to have the Jenneker off. We had a reasonable speed with the normal jib and luckily I could sleep another couple of hours. Yummy, yummy! Actually, on the Indian Ocean, when the waves are a little bit coming from two sides and not very comfortable, it is a lot nicer not to go very fast. Two miles to go. And we're probably going to see our first boat during the whole crossing. We're in safe mode since. Uh, Mariah, I heard that uh, Nino wrapped his spear around the ship. Uh, he's still sailing on the main. <laughs> it will take a little bit longer to get to Kokos. And then we have to find a way to get it off. There's a boat six miles in front of us, eight miles. We might catch it. Well, it gives us something to do at least. Ten miles to go. Kokos Islands. That corner of Direction Island, through there. Now, once we arrive, you have to call Cocos Police on VHF 20. Remember that you were supporting the captain uh, last night. Oh, yeah, we were so slow. Oh, come on, we have been here like two hours earlier. Wow. It's always scary when you see the bottom so clearly. So I'm constantly washing my tip sounder, but of course when there's a big bummy you wouldn't see it. But we followed the waypoints that were given by the valley control and uh, we were completely fine.
And then we entered this beautiful turquoise paradise where everybody was already doing water sports. So the clearing in on Cocos Island is very easy. If you compare it to going into Australia itself, it's a big difference. And then we were off to the island. One by one, some other boats of the fleets are coming in. Here's Fou de Basson. Nina will be a little bit later because uh, they are not going very fast, six and a half knots, with their open spee or half open spee. We are so fortunate being able to visit these islands uh, with our own boat because on land it's not very attractive, there are no nice resorts, uh, there are places where you can stay, but being on the boat is so much better. Pass coming into the atoll there. Uh, we walk upstream first, that way, and then we snorkel back. Because I hurt my hand in Christmas Island and it was a little bit infected, I volunteered not to swim in the rip and I picked Nina and Mark up at the end of the coral reef. It's called the rip. Uh, it's plenty of current, but. It's pretty calm today.
it's difficult to come in in the dark. Uh, Nino, with his flapping sail, is actually coming in at 10.30 in the evening, so it will be pitch black. So from the last waypoint into the anchorage, Mark swam and checked the whole area if it was deep enough and we made a route. And when they're coming in, we go out with the dinghy, pick them up at the last waypoint and bring them the last part into the bay and to the position where they can safely drop the anchor. We still miss Tina on our boat, to be honest. <laughs> Tina, where are you? Come back. Tell them how good I'm in Nitro. Well, Tina was really good <laughs> in the night as well. They have their speed wrapped around the jib uh, for uh, one half day now, or two days even. The week goes immediately into the mast, but we find out very soon that it is impossible to get it off. So we tie it completely to the forestay so that they can sleep, and then we will see what we can do tomorrow. In the morning we first go for an excursion to Home Island. The village is actually a very well organized place, all the same prefab houses in a row. People are pretty wealthy here, they all have solar panels on the roof, I see quads in front of the houses, of course there is a mosque, and we're going for a walk over the island. <laughs> There's actually a pretty well stocked supermarket here. There's nothing fresh, but at least all the other stuff you can get there.
And back on Direction Island, we are going to focus on Nino's spinnaker again. Success has many fathers, uh, Luik, but you're still the one going up there. The week is starting from the top and another team is starting from the bottom but if you roll it out on one side on the other side is rolling in it's completely stuck we couldn't solve it On the next day, before we go back to Nino to continue with the work in the mast, we first filmed the Saga family wing foiling through the bay. It is very impressive, actually. behind uh, the notch and we hope that it's going to be a, let, a little bit less waves and a little bit less wind. Uh, Rob is going to climb the mast. Oh. Yeah. 
and he's going to cut the sail in pieces. Rack is taking care of the dinghy. It is such a waste. Uh, we are so sorry for this beautiful sail. On the other hand, they are not going to use it on the Indian Ocean with a lot of wind and a lot of waves. They will not miss it until South Africa, I think. Then the wind picks up and then the current in the rip is so much faster. Kind of experiments today. Rake is making naan bread. Never done that before. And we will leave this prize that Tina won at Direction Island, Cocos Keeling, on the ceiling of the sailor shed. I won how long it will stay there. It is actually very special what we are doing. I heard that not even 100 boats visit these islands per year. There are actually a lot less boats going around the world than I expected. Commercial cargo, and then we'll be able to stay on the channel secondary, which is on the right, which will enter into the city. We wanted to see West Island, but the only way was to go by dinghy for one and a half mile to Home Island and from there take the ferry. Because the wind was so strong and the weather was bad, the trip to Home Island was really very wet. Mm -hmm. 
Look at this, they're both in front of the Tushi Warmer. And then from the ferry terminal for 50 cents you can go to the town center. I've never seen such a density of palm trees before. Palm trees and ferns like a real jungle. <laughs> 